Alrighty guys, what is going up? Welcome back to the best investing money management channel on YouTube. I am your host Carter and in today's video we're going to be talking about a lot of these Reddit stocks. Should you buy them or did we miss the opportunity to make millions? We're going to be breaking down really the top three most popular Reddit stocks and should you buy them or not? So starting off with the very first one is GameStop. So GameStop, you guys can see this thing is volatile. You know, this thing goes up and down at rapid rates. Really went from 20 bucks all the way up to 500, sold off down to 40, back up to almost 400, back down to 150, up to 350, back down to 200. Okay, so GameStop, when they did this, they did actually sell millions upon millions of their shares to pay off a lot of their long-term debt, which, you know, bravo to them, because that was a very smart move that GameStop did, because realistically, when do you think GameStop's gonna be hitting $500 again? Most likely, not anytime soon. GameStop, you know, the fundamentals of the company, they've actually been slowing down on the revenue side for literally years. They were closing thousands of stores across the United States, and honestly, it was looking like a foreclosure. You guys can see this thing. If you look, it was trading for about, it's very hard to see just because of this, but it was about $12 coming down to about $2.57. So it is a massive downward trend in the stock price, which is kind of expected. The reason why is because GameStop really didn't focus on e-commerce. Now they are. That's why we've seen a lot of buying pressures because they've changed a lot of their board members. They paid off a lot of debt. And now they're really focusing on high quality stores and they're focusing more online, which in my opinion, I think they should have seen that shift, especially when Amazon started coming around. They should have seen that shift and made the adjustments for the company. But overall, GameStop for me definitely carries a lot more risk than traditional stocks. This is more of a speculative investment. This is a higher risk, higher reward for sure. Now, on the short term, GameStop definitely carries a lot of potential, right? You guys can see this little purple line here. This is what you call the 200 moving average or the 90 day moving average line. So it comes in contact with it and we've see, we, we see it and we notice it gets buying pressure right on that line. Comes in contact with it again, we get buying pressure on that line. Comes back up, falls back down, and recently we didn't get a break above it, so I think we'll probably see some short-term buying pressure. Now, this move could definitely be from about 200 to probably 230, but I wouldn't be surprised if this absolutely just continues to sell off and we get a breakdown to about 170 to 165. Now, that would be very expected, but I think there's a lot of buying pressure behind this. So overall, my my analysis, I wouldn't recommend investing more than about 2 to 5% of your portfolio in a company like GameStop. So what that means is if you have a $100,000 portfolio, I wouldn't invest more than $5,000. That's just me just because of the overall risk levels and there's better opportunity elsewhere with other stocks just because of the overall risk tolerance. So moving on to AMC. AMC is by far probably the worst one on this. Uh, the reason why is because if you look at the overall increase in competition that movie theater faces, in 2020, we realized we don't have to go out to movies to actually watch new movies, right? We, we've we really seen companies like uh, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, um, you know, HBO that really put movies out there. You pay $20 for, for them. You can pause it whenever you want. You, you can eat as much popcorn as you want and you don't have to sit with other people and all that other stuff. AMC faces a lot of competition, but on the plus side, we've noticed AMC when this stock was trading for about 50 to $60, very similar to what GameStop did, they sold millions of shares, paying off a lot of debt, which is fantastic because they took on billions of debt to get through 2020. So now they're about this break even point like they were in 2019 and things are starting to reopen. So this is why we've seen a lot of buying pressure, not to mention uh, this is a massive stock among Wall Street bets, Reddit and all that other 
you know, all those other social media sites. So for me, I think if I was going to buy it, it definitely would be about $40 just because there's some support there, not much, but a little bit. It's better to have some support than none. Resistance, definitely at about 65. You guys can see it's hit it every time. A lot of sell off there. But you know, for me, this one with the increasing competition, lower margins, I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe about one to two percent of your portfolio, but nothing more than that, just because of the overall risk. Okay, the last stock that I really want to show you guys is BlackBerry BB. BlackBerry is actually kind of changing the company. When a lot of people think of BlackBerry, they think of the early 2000s smartphones with the wheel, you know, that little ball on it, and they had that full keyboard. They, they really, that was like their only really major thing that they've done, okay? But over the past couple of months, uh, BlackBerry is starting to create software. This software is actually gonna help other companies out and it's gonna overall make it so they can start making more money, and I think it's gonna be on the consumer goods side. So we'll see what happens with that. I know they're still about five years out on that outlook, but look at this. This is what you call a massive fad, okay? The overall buying pressure, you guys can see, this thing was exploding up, sold off, and really hasn't had um, a lot of you know popularity until recently. Okay, where it came up to about thirty dollars, but I do think you know we're definitely looking at a five-year outlook for this thing to actually look somewhat interesting for me, just because they're virtually not going to make any money for the next couple of years, and I would rather put my money elsewhere in other stocks. Another fun social media uh, ETF is Buzz. This has been super popular. You know, this is the one and the one and only David uh, Portnoy, the Wall Street Bets founder. He's invested in this. He's shouted out a ton. But overall, this really tracks the really most popular social media stocks. And it puts them into this ETF. And you can buy them and all that other stuff. But overall, this is what I would rather see you guys invest in. It's not as volatile. It's more fun. It's more speculative. But you're still, uh, you know, you're still diversified across 75 of the most popular stocks. And a lot of the most popular stocks or blue chip stocks, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, all those are still going to be in this because they're still heavily talked about. But overall, guys, that is it. That's kind of what's going on with Reddit and all the really top three stocks. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we will see you guys later. Remember to stay happy, stay positive, and stay safe out there. Take care, everyone.